wonderful people. How are you doing? How have you been? Are you still watching us? Are you still subscribing? If you haven't subscribed to our show yet, please subscribe and also do not forget to hit the notification bell to get notified every time we upload a new video. So today I'm visiting some new friends that I met the other day and um, I said I want to see them in their natural habitat. So that's what we are going to be doing today. So I hope you stay with me and let's go meet some awesome burbles. We were told they are not burbles, they are burbles. Take notes. So see you, let's go meet the dogs and meet the gentleman who take care of the dog as we discover more about the burbles. <laughs> Kama kawaida, this is your girl Linda Kenyita and of course this is Dog TV Kenya, the best documentary channel for all dog lovers. So I'm here chilling with these handsome gentlemen with some handsome dogs, uh, handsome, pretty. Yes, pretty and chilled. That dog is extra, extra chilled. So I know they're not new in this channel, but either way, I'll let them reintroduce themselves. Yeah, I'm Jacob Mgonyi, mm -hmm. uh, co-owner at Esoteric Mastiffs. Ah, okay. yes. My name is uh, Saint Ivo, um, also a dog breeder, co-owner at Esoteric Mastiffs, as well as a sound engineer. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So you guys tell me, how long have you been keeping dogs and... Um, be, uh, how long and what are the breeds ha that you have had before, before now settling to the burbles? I started breeding um, in 1994. Um, I, th I started with an Alsatian, mm -hmm. uh, two giant schnauzers, mm -hmm. um, and a uh, Ridgeback, wow. Rhodesian Ridgeback. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm the younger brother, so for me it was through observation, and then with time I, I joined him on this, uh, okay. this great journey in dog breeding. Okay. So, so far, is, is the Burbul your ultimate breed or you have another breed that you guys would want to bring in? We have researched, um, had a couple of ideas and other dogs, mm -hmm. but we decided to settle on the South African uh, Burbul, mm -hmm. um, especially after having lived there mm -hmm. and getting to interact with it from the source. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we, we felt that we, we knew the breed better than any other breed. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have had Rottweilers, mm -hmm. uh, but... <laughs> Uh, the high drive, um, we had a couple of incidents and uh, we felt that they were not the best for um, individuals who have a family. Mm -hmm. um, so because we also have family and we, and we love dogs, mm -hmm. uh, we felt uh, the burbul was the best fit for us. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you. Um, yeah, I, I share the same sentiments as he does. Um, so I'd say, I'd say a personal favorite for me would be huskies. But yeah, Rottweilers is something that I've come to love with time. But Burbles, I have to say, would be the ultimate breed for me. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Now, I think this is the first time that uh, we are meeting guys who are specifically specializing with the Burbles. So take us into like, how is the breed? Who can have and own this breed? Oh, wow. Um, what is a breed? Um, okay. Firstly, uh, the the origin of the breed is uh, from the from South Africa, mm -hmm. um, uh, hence the name uh, Burbul, you know, farmer's dog. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, initially, it was bred for um, uh, for its protective qualities, mm -hmm. to take care of the livestock, mm -hmm. to protect the lager. Um, so um, it's a mastiff, um, as you can see, it's quite a big dog. Uh, so I would say that if you've never owned a mastiff before, mm -hmm. uh, this is not a dog to own, mm -hmm. you know. Um, uh, you know, I never owned a big type dog. Uh, they're very strong-willed um, and um, uh, very territorial. Mm -hmm. uh, so they will also test you. So you need to be a very confident handler mm -hmm. who uh, has handled a mastiff before. Mm -hmm. um, um, so yeah, uh, I think at the end of the day, they're quite ideal for homes with, um, uh, with kids. Uh, because they get along, they have a very good temperament. Mm -hmm. um, they're very territorial, very protective, uh, very calm. Um, they don't do well with strangers. Mm -hmm. That's why it's very good to actually socialize them initially mm -hmm. uh, when you want them to interact with a particular group of people. This is a big dog. Mm. How is its diet like? What do you feed your dogs? Um, we mostly feed them uh, raw beef uh, as well as kibble. Yes, that's the main ones we give them. Raw beef and kibble. To take us through the day, how many times do these dogs eat? How do you know that actually this dog has had enough? What happens if it's underfed or something like that? 
Um, feeding. We feed, uh, it's recommended to feed them 650 grams of kibble, mm -hmm. um, um, uh, which is dry food. Um, um, and uh, the particular one that we use is 25% protein, 12% mm -hmm. fat, um, and it's an active brand because um, it's a big piece of property, so they tend to run around a lot, mm -hmm. and you don't want them to sp to burn all of the uh, energy, um, and um, you know at the end of the day have atrophy. Mm -hmm. So we we do um, uh, the 25% protein, 12% fat, mm -hmm. um, 650 grams, but also it depends. Um, sometimes you may up it if you feel you need to up it, mm -hmm. but it's preferable to give them that particular measurement. Mm -hmm. And this is simply because of um, uh, pressure on the joints. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to have elbow problems, hip problems, so it's best to actually uh, stick to those particular measurements. Mm -hmm. uh, we also feed them um, um, raw meat. Uh, you see, the rationale here is that uh, when you cook meat, 80% of it is denatured. <laughs> so, so what's the point of giving them cooked meat? So that way we prefer at the end of the day to give them um, a raw meat so they can get 80% of the nutrients, mm -hmm. uh, calcium, the amino acids, name it. Um, and then of course we throw in eggs uh, for their court um, and once in a while we also give them yogurt mm -hmm. uh, for the culture mm -hmm. uh, in regards, for, in regards to, the, to, uh, to, uh, to bettering their digestion. Um, and um, other than that you can throw in fruits watermelons mm -hmm. once in a while carrots mm -hmm. you know for the breath you know um and um once in a while also sukumawiki mm -hmm. uh, for fiber mm -hmm. uh, so yeah now when it comes to the health of these breeds have you had any challenges so far yeah poor bulls come with their own um health challenges i remember the first poor bull we we had or we owned um uh, had vaginal pro prolapse, you know, after, <laughs> and this time we only get to find out after the second heat, mm -hmm. uh, she had prolapse, so that was a setback, because <laughs> you can't breed such. Mm -hmm. um, um, other than that, we have not experienced any other health problems. Mm -hmm. um, um, or of the previous, uh, uh, we also had another male uh, who had um, entropion, mm -hmm. um, uh, but it was mostly because of the environment. Mm -hmm. Uh, because we live next to a cement producing company here, mm -hmm. which is only 200 meters. So the, the dust is usually a problem. Um, um, and that's something also which we are learning how to, to manage with these other ones that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, at least be treating the eyes mm -hmm. um, um, and, and alleviating that particular um, variable that we have in our environment. Mm -hmm. Yes. So these dogs are fit. So generally you say they walk around. Is there any other... Uh, activities you do them t with them to maintain their physical fitness and maybe from experience or maybe if you've researched on it what happens when this dog is not exercised or it doesn't get adequate physical exercise well being a heavy breed um, <laughs> definitely they'll be more lazy <laughs> but other than that uh, they might have issues with their joints because of, of their weight it's, it's good to have an active dog because when you have an active dog uh, it's, it's always moving around, uh, and with moving around, is uh, it has a natural exercise it should have as a dog. Mm -hmm. You know, the limbs, uh, we talk about digestive system and all that. So, um, um, having a dog that, that doesn't, is not as fit, it's not advisable to not uh, have an active, heavy dog. Mm -hmm. When it comes to small dogs, uh, it's a whole different story. Mm -hmm. But with them, they, they need to be active. Mm -hmm. and, and, and also, being a burbul, it's, it's actually a working dog. So for them, I think it just comes naturally mm -hmm. uh, for them to move around and do what they do best. And that is protect the compound, protect mm -hmm. any animals in that compound, mm -hmm. as well as you and your family. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think people need to be careful. You know, um, uh, um, should not be walking your young puppy for, long, for too long. Eh? Because um, uh, then you'll be putting pressure on the uh, on the joints. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you may have elbow problems and hip problems. So we we normally begin giving them free roaming license when they are um, ten months old, mm -hmm. eleven months old. Mm -hmm. um, other than up until um, um, the age of ten months, they only have about one hour of playtime outside. Mm -hmm. uh, they're caged mm -hmm. about two hours. Mm -hmm. Um, um, because we also want to limit their movement a bit, because also you know um, uh, they, they're getting the heavy, mm -hmm. you know, um, and and their bones are still soft. So 
I think at the end of the day, as a, as, as, a, as a pet owner, you need to be able to study your dog and know. Mm -hmm. uh, but advisably, uh, until they're up to the age of eight or nine, you should not be taking them for long walks. Mm -hmm. It is not advisable. So uh, also, it's, it's all also about um, uh, the, the maturation as well. Yeah. Now, when it comes to training, do you guys, these dogs are very obedient. So do you train your own dogs or do you acquire services from the outside? And at what age do you start training? Uh, well, I'm, I'm the one who does the training at uh, Esoteric uh, Mastiffs. Um, so basically the training I do is uh, just the basic obedience training. Uh, I don't do attack and defense and the rest. Uh, for them we just mainly teach them obedience because, you know, being a heavy breed, you need to have control over them as well as you want them to have a good temperament. Not only so, but good habits <laughs> when they're around people. Um, um, so yeah, we usually just, uh, I'm the one who does the training. Uh, so for the basic obedience training is knowing when to come out of their kennels, when to sit, when to stop, and, and, and yeah, and, and, and when to also stay. So it's, it's basically those, I, I think, are the, the main pivotal training points, I think, for, for, for these dogs. Yeah. Now as dog owners, which vaccination process have you dogs undergone and also like we, we, we cover vaccination more when we have we talk about puppies what about these grown mature dogs oh, that's, a, that's a very good question um firstly as puppies uh, you know they get we give them pavo one mm -hmm. at six weeks and then at 10 weeks they get their pavo two mm -hmm. um and then at uh, about 16 weeks they get their dhlp and rabies mm -hmm. uh, some people may say it's an overkill but overkill is better you know prevention is better than cure yeah. Uh, but also over and above that, when they're adults, we do usually give them DHLP mm -hmm. every year. Mm -hmm. um, also, some individuals may say that's an overkill, but mm -hmm. we always err towards uh, caution. Mm -hmm. um, and this is because um, uh, there's some you can get an outbreak of distemper, you mm -hmm. know, and all these other sort of viruses. Mm -hmm. So you want your dog to always be okay, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and and uh, I know a lot of people prefer to give DHLP only to the to the dams, mm -hmm. but also we prefer to also give it to our studs as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, because they, they're the studs, so we we prefer to boost the immunity of both. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, when you're getting a litter, you're getting a strong litter. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, you guys, you are you breeding, right? So you you've mentioned a litter. So you only have two females. Uh, are they currently on the breeding breeding program? And when you breed, or when you're looking at the market, what's your target? Firstly, um, as esoteric mastiffs, you have to understand that. Every breeder has a particular objective. Mm -hmm. uh, for us, our objective is to have a working dog. Mm -hmm. uh, when I mean a working dog, is a dog that uh, is very independent, confident, uh, that is mainly for guiding, mm -hmm. you know, doing any other sort of work where they have to protect a space or something. Um, and for us, our target is people who have property, mm -hmm. uh, who are looking for a dog that is confident, mm -hmm. um, um, uh, courageous. Mm -hmm. um, well, we prefer our dogs to have a little bit more of high drive. <laughs> I know there's some individuals who don't prefer that, but for us, that we feel is also a, a, a good fundamental cornerstone of a good working dog mm -hmm. when you talk about guarding. Mm -hmm. you know. So uh, our target mar market mostly is usually farmers, mm -hmm. uh, individuals um, with warehouses, mm -hmm. um, companies, industri industries, mm -hmm. um, or individuals who maybe are in high crime areas mm -hmm. and they feel they want a dog that, they, that can make them s sleep sweetly at night you know <laughs> so we, we're here to serve those kind of uh, individuals mm -hmm. um, um, because also we, we we also want a breed that um, a line that also is very intelligent mm -hmm. becomes easy to actually teach and train because mm -hmm. um, 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 there's some lines which are very stubborn uh, so so for us that is our target mm -hmm. and uh, we believe by 2027 god willing mm -hmm. we will have exactly what we want because these are foundational mm -hmm. um, 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 burbles mm -hmm. They basically will be the main ancestors of what we shall have in the next couple of years. Actually, you've mentioned 2027 20, and this has led to my next question, which was in my head, by yes. the way. Like, <laughs> when you look at the future, yes. <laughs> what is in the future for you guys? Do you continue the burbles? Uh, do you have your own line or do you still continue doing what you're doing? What's the plan for you guys? For us, um, uh, in, in the future, we, we want to be part of uh, the burble space mm -hmm. um, because we believe we have the portion mm -hmm. and we have an idea in mind of what a good portable ought to look like mm -hmm. and uh, that's what we want to implement with our line mm -hmm. but then there also there's the next guy also who has his own idea mm -hmm. and that's the beauty of it all mm -hmm. so we we would definitely want to have our own line mm -hmm. 
but we also would like also to be working with a lot of local breeders mm -hmm. because we have seen a lot of great local dogs, uh, dogs locally right now. Mm -hmm. So um, for us, we believe that uh, East Africa is a, is, is a very good space for this breed to grow and flourish. Mm -hmm. So for us, the future, we believe that we'll be part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and by that time, we hope that we'll, our friends from East and Central Africa will also be part of the conversation mm -hmm. um, um, because we would want to also be we also want places like South Sudan, Sudan, Congo, um, um, Central African Republic, uh, Mali, um, um, to be also be part of the conversation. And we hope that Esoteric will have their dogs mm -hmm. um, um, flying the flag in all of these uh, uh, spaces I've mentioned. Awesome. For somebody who's watching us and they are new in these and they do not understand what we say when we talk about line and you guys having your own line, can you try and, and uh, expound on that? Line um, refers to both the genotype and phenotype. Mm -hmm. You know, um, um, uh, the genetic and the physical traits of, 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 of a particular dog. And uh, we talk about line is, um, for example, there are breeders who um, are known uh, to have dogs with uh, great height. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and what they have done is that over time they pick the puppies with with the best height, mm -hmm. and those are the ones they keep on breeding. Mm -hmm. So that you're able to look at a particular bull bull and immediately tell, ah, oh, that dog is from was bred by so and so. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there are some other dogs which uh, um, have a particular mask, mm -hmm. you know, um, um, uh, or a particular size of head. Mm -hmm. You know, you're able to know and look at a dog and know if this was bred by so and so. Mm -hmm. Why? Simply because they they tend to pick particular traits and reinforce them over time as they breed. Mm -hmm. um, and, and and of course, then uh, there is also those lines that are known for the for their for their genotype. You know, maybe for the aggression, mm -hmm. or um, um, uh, the very great working dogs. Mm -hmm. And simply, what happens is that uh, as a breeder, you tend to look for those puppies within the litter mm -hmm. that have the particular traits that you want to be reflected in in, in your kennel. And then these are the ones that you breed over time. And um, and then also you can get into the line breeding where you start breeding cousins, uh, uncles, relatives. And this is to reinforce particular traits uh, within, um, um, the, within your line. So uh, this is something which has to be done meticulously over time, mm -hmm. uh, uh, proper planning, uh, um, because not just about dog A and B. Mm -hmm. uh, what do I mean? You could have, she, she may have a poor top line, mm -hmm. uh, the, the structure, and may have a very great top line. Um, uh, it, would mean, it would make sense for us to breed both of them mm -hmm. uh, because we want to correct something. Mm -hmm. But if both of them have poor top lines, mm -hmm. you know, then <laughs> uh, uh, at the end of the day, you're not really building, um, 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 you're not working towards uh, bettering the breed. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're breeding, is what are you correcting? Because the dogs you have are not perfect. Mm -hmm. um, so w w what are you perfecting? You know, um, um, uh, I, I, and, and it's not like I'm really cutting up people with dogs with poor top lines because <laughs> there, there's some associations uh, that really don't care much about some of these things. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, for example, with BAA, we have a breed standard mm -hmm. that we have to stick to. Um, and, and top lines are some of the things that the club actually is, um, would love to see in the future mm -hmm. um, um, being improved. Mm -hmm. So we're all about improving the breed. Mm -hmm. And that's why we feel that within five generations, uh, you may you might be getting towards a semblance of what you feel is something that is almost perfect, no. and that's why we're talking about 2027. 20, God willing, yes. Okay. Um. I hope you guys got that. It's not just about getting two dogs to mate and you have puppies. Yes. Now, next question: pests. How do you fight off pests in your kennel? We usually use. Uh, uh, we have a certain process. Uh, we firstly wash them. <laughs> Uh, after washing them, then we usually use uh, flea drops. Um, at times we use flea drops, um, and at times we use um, 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 a spray. But most of the time we use flea drops because they're more effective and they last longer. Uh, like the ones we use usually last for about three months. So we usually place it here at the back. Flea drops is how basically flea drops work. You, most, you place it here at the back of the neck. It's, it's a small pipette with, with a liquid. Mm -hmm. So you, you put it on, on the back of the neck. And the reason why we put it at the back of the neck mm -hmm. is that they may, they may not reach it or lick it because it, it is fatal for them. So once you put it uh, on, the, on the back of their neck, uh, it takes about 24 to 48 hours and it seeps into their skin. And any flea or any tick 
that uh, gets on their skin uh, and bites or whatever it may be, it will fall off. So it's usually very effective, especially for us, uh, by the fact that we live in a semi-arid area. It's very dusty, very hot, and also we live in the equator. <laughs> it's a tropical region. So fleas, ticks, you know, is, 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 is a common problem. Yes. So uh, I would advise any dog lover out there to mostly use flea drops. Uh, I think flea drops are the most effective in such environments. Yeah. Now, uh, you mentioned this place here and I remembered. Um, what do we call this here? Microchipping. Yes. Uh, can you mention some, something about microchipping? What is microchipping and how does it help? Uh, microchipping basically is a small little chip with uh, information about the dog. Mm -hmm. You know, it's almost like an identifier. It's mm -hmm. like the ID, the passport mm -hmm. for the dog. Mm -hmm. Not really a passport. You could say the vaccine card is a passport. Mm -hmm. But this is, is a unique identifier so that even if your dog is lost, uh, they, they will be able to identify your dog and mm -hmm. it becomes easy to, to recover your dog. Mm -hmm. um, but most importantly, also in these days and age of COVID and the rest, you can see why microchipping becomes important because you're able to trace the history of a particular dog. Mm -hmm. uh, so we microchip them. Mm -hmm. and after microchipping them, then we fill in the litter registration form, mm -hmm. send it back to the World Association of, of Africa, the mm -hmm. secretary, mm -hmm. and then uh, they send us back birth certificates. Yeah, okay. uh, now with the birth certificate, you have to understand it's a document which shows the lineage of this dog's four generations back mm. current up until all the way of four generations back mm -hmm. so this is also important for breeders so you're able to know which lines that you're targeting in regards to what you're doing in regards mm -hmm. to your objective yes mm. now advice to somebody who thinks that this is a dog that they would want to own mm. well, what would you tell them first of all you need to have experience with dogs uh, because these are big dogs and 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 stubborn. and they're stubborn dogs, <laughs> so they need a lot of patience and and experience, uh, uh, knowledge, in other words. Uh, and 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 what I'd advise them is that if you haven't owned one of them before, and you're getting one, get one that is trained. Just uh, I'd say that would be the bare minimum. But if you haven't owned a dog before, I, I believe I'd say, don't. Because the last thing you want is an accident happening or having a, a situation that uh, may not be uh, <laughs> ideal. And you know we're dealing with animals, so they could end up being instinctive and someone could, uh, could get hurt. Uh, when it comes to the welfare of your puppies, because you're taking care, good care of your dogs and the parents and also for the dogs in your breeding program, how do you ensure that the puppies that you're rehoming are well taken care of out there? We just don't sell puppies to anyone who calls. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you can call and uh, we'll pick and I'll listen to you. And But when the rubber meets the road, when that time comes, mm -hmm. we need to know where do you live, mm -hmm. you know. Um, uh, you, you can also read a person. Are they passionate or are they really care? Mm -hmm. um, why? Because the last thing you want is uh, your dog being taken up by a person who's caught up in the moment. Because mm -hmm. some people are caught up in the moment and they feel like I want a dog right now. Mm -hmm. Then uh, they forget that this is a long-term relationship. I mean, which you could even span up to 13 years if you look after your dog well. Um, and then maybe after one year, after the animal is big, because you know there's a puppy love, you know. And then once it is no longer a puppy, then what happens? You know, where you need to cultivate patience, blah, 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 blah. So we profile an individual. We just don't sell to anybody. Because as I was saying, we have a line that we want to be a working dog. So our dogs are very high energy. They are not ideal for individuals who have apartments. Um, so. Uh, if you have an apartment, I would discourage you from buying our line. Mm -hmm. um, um, but if you are looking for a guarding dog and you have a piece of property at least 50 by 100 where they can move, mm -hmm. then you can get you can get out. So we, we actually even look at where will they be living. Mm -hmm. um, and I can assure you that from uh, our maiden litter, mm -hmm. we know where they're living. Mm -hmm. And we already profiled those individuals and we felt they were worthy enough mm -hmm. to actually purchase the puppies. Mm -hmm. So it's not about just, um, a lot of people just when they think about breeding, they think uh, Kenya shilling. <laughs> uh, that should be the wrong motivator. Mm -hmm. um, um, it should be about the portion. Mm -hmm. um, um, the Kenya shilling is a bonus, mm -hmm. you know, because they have to eat, they have to be looked after and the like. Mm -hmm. But if that's the driving motivator, mm -hmm. then you're going to have a problem. Then you're definitely bordering on, big, on, on being a puppy farmer. You know, um, which is a whole different discourse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, as a kennel, or maybe as breeders, like, what is the preferred number of times that you're supposed to breed a dam? 
Well, um, I'll speak for us. Uh, well, um, for us, we usually prefer to, to breed a dam uh, at most four, mm -hmm. but preferably three, mm -hmm. uh, three liters mm -hmm. in its lifetime. Mm -hmm. um, well, the thing is, a dog gets on heat twice a year, mm -hmm. but according to breed standard, we are, we are only supposed to breed it once a year. Mm -hmm. So, so um, um, for example, our, our dam, Tikva, she, she's had one liter already. So we, we are prepping her for another two. Mm -hmm. But we usually prefer to skip at some point. Mm -hmm. Because um, also the other reason why we don't do more than three to uh, four, four times in the lifetime is because we want to increase the longevity of the dog itself. Mm -hmm. And also remember, just like human beings, with the older she is, uh, the less the quality of the puppies will get or the less the numbers of the puppies you'll get. So it's best to also, uh, that's why a breeding program is very important because now you can be able to regulate that between its, its teenage years to its adult time. So, um, so knowing that you're doing it once a year, you can plan for either three years or four years knowing that you're skipping one. So yeah, that's that's how we prefer to do it to to ensure that the health of the dog is 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 is, is optimum, and also longevity. You want the dog to live up to even 15 years, you know. Yeah. And, and so if you're giving advice to somebody who's wanting to buy a dog, no matter the breed, what kind of advice would you give them? What are the do's and what are the don'ts first? Kind of. Do's and don'ts. Maybe what I can say is that um, when you're buying um, a puppy. Remember, as I've previously said, it's a long-term relationship. Eh? Mm -hmm. It could be with this lovely little um, um, far ball for the next 15 years. Mm -hmm. So you don't want a dog that has already come traumatized. You know, um, um, and, and, and that's what will happen when you don't do your research mm -hmm. on the dog that you're buying. Mm -hmm. You don't know well, how its early years were. Mm -hmm. Because by the time even a dog is three months, there's a lot of modeling which has already happened. Mm -hmm. You know, um, um, if that dog has been living in a traumatic um, uh, environment from day one, uh, even by the time you're getting it as three months old, you'll have a lot of work mm -hmm. um, 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 teaching it new stuff. Not that it can't be taught, mm -hmm. it can't. But also in regards to health issues. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't research well, it may be buying a puppy that has genetic issues mm -hmm. uh, um, that will only manifest themselves once they reach maturity. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, and by that time, remember, you'll have already invested a lot of time and money in raising your, and grooming your, uh, your friend. Mm. Um, and, and then maybe 18 years, 18 months down the line, you realize, whoops, you have a health problem. It could be a heart issue. Mm -hmm. It could be a hip issue. It could be an elbow issue. Um, it could be a, a, a whole um, um, uh, array of uh, genetic problems. Mm -hmm. So it's best to research. Mm -hmm. um, and also remember that these mastiffs are not cheap. <laughs> so if you're planning to spend your car 80,000 Kenyan shillings, uh, your 800 dollars, your 1,000 um, dollars um, on, on a good friend, um, then it behooves you to actually research. Mm -hmm. Because um, uh, there, are, there, are, there are a couple of individuals out there who are not nice characters. Eh? Um, and, um, and you have to understand, it's also some people have seen a business opportunity. Um, so, chances of being scammed are high, um, and that's why you um, should never just go with the eye, you know, um, eye can be very deceptive. Mm -hmm. uh, and also when puppies are tiny, you know, the fat content and uh, all that, it can be, they look very cute, it can be very deceptive. Um, 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 so, I think it's only shrewd mm -hmm. for an individual who wants to spend that sort of, of money and time mm -hmm. and emotion mm -hmm. um, 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 to do their research. Uh, it will finally pay off. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Now, the burble, it has a short coat, right? Yes, yes. Does it come with a lot of grooming expectations or what should I expect when it comes to grooming it? Um, since they have a short coat, it's, it's very easy to, 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 to take care of, of, of their grooming. Um, um, we, we brush them uh, once in a while, uh, every month, maybe once a week, um, um, you know, just to shade off any any um, um, shedding because you know dogs shed yeah. so with the short coat uh, it's very easy it's a very easy brush for them when it comes to their nails mm -hmm. uh, we don't really have to clip them because with the environment that they live in uh, there's a lot of gravel there's also a lot of, uh, of, of marum so they get to as they run around at night doing their job 
uh, the the gravel and the maram tends to to how do you put it file their, nail, their nails. So for them it's 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 yeah. So for them <laughs> it comes to it comes to nails. It's 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 more of a natural <laughs> occurrence. <laughs> but for grooming, uh, it's very easy. Just a, a simple brush once a week, and yeah, yeah, good to go. Yeah. Now the other thing is like for me to be able to raise these healthy, perfect. Uh, animal what do i need to do to ensure that generally it's health it's okay yeah i always say a healthy dog is a happy dog you know um and how do you get a happy dog um firstly where the the where, where they sleep mm -hmm. you know where they spend most of their time mm -hmm. um uh, we basically have a kennel with a great run mm -hmm. um uh, we have a wooden pellet mm -hmm. um sometimes they choose not to lie on it so they end up with <laughs> with this um uh, markings uh, um, so basically it has to be cool because we live in a very hot area um, and um, as such we need a space which will be naturally cool during the day um, so there is that uh, then we ensure that uh, we we, we um, disinfect the space for fleas uh, any other pests so that's firstly the living space uh, which we also clean and wash with um, uh, detergents such as Carol once in a while just to kill off the smell mm -hmm. uh, jig mixed with good soap mm -hmm. um, and also this uh, and, and also a, cup, a couple of other antiseptics mm -hmm. then um, uh, it comes to general health we usually put apple cider vinegar in their water um, it helps with their breath um, also helps with their digestion and we noticed that uh, whenever we put apple cider vinegar they will finish our water um, so there's that factor as well. Also, we put seven seas, uh, seven, seven seas or Scots emulsion mm -hmm. into their yogurt. Mm -hmm. uh, this also helps with the coat mm -hmm. and also, of course, the memory because mm -hmm. uh, um, you want an intelligent creature as well. <laughs> um, and then um, uh, we also give them chunks of fat, um, which helps them um, uh, in regards to uh, their weight, mm -hmm. to maintain their weight. Mm -hmm. Then because we feed them raw meat, mm -hmm. uh, we deworm them every month. Oh. Now I know there's some people who argue and they say that uh, that is not the right thing to do because at the end of the day you're compromising their immunity. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, we look at, um, we look at what we feed them, you know, and uh, raw, raw stuff has a lot of manenos, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> so uh, because we want to be more preventative, we are proactive. Mm -hmm. We, we, we like to be proactive. That's, that's our policy at the kennel. Mm -hmm. We are more proactive uh, than reactive. Uh, so we usually tend, it's more expensive mm -hmm. to deworm them every month, mm -hmm. but we believe that a dog that is dewormed is a dog that is happy. When the dog is happy inside, when the inside is okay, mm -hmm. uh, and the outside is, 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 is generally comfortable, uh, that, that, that is a dog that is happy and loyal and uh, willing to work. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, uh, in regards to the general health, those are the key factors that we usually look at, mm -hmm. over and above also um, um, uh, washing them. Uh, we tend to wash them once every two months mm -hmm. uh, because we use the flea drops. Mm -hmm. So um, um, we grooming them in regards to brushing them is what we tend to do most. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, anything else? Um, um, we also tend we also give them a lot of eye drops mm -hmm. because we live, as I said, we live in a dusty area mm -hmm. uh, next to a cement company, mm -hmm. so we get a lot of eye irritation. So we tend to give them a lot of eye drops uh, to prevent any complications. We do include uh, an egg into their meals. Um, we do that is it two, uh, about twice, twice, twice a week. Yeah, we usually put uh, a raw egg in their food, whether it's kibble, whether it's the raw, or whether it's uh, it's, uh, it's the mala, the yogurt we're giving them. So with that also it helps with their coat, and also it's good protein. Yeah. Okay, people, I told you having a dog is like having a baby. These guys will not talk for themselves, so you have to keep your eye on them just like a baby. Now, I've had a nice time, I've had a nice chat with these gentlemen, and it's that time for me to say goodbye. But before we say goodbye, remember that we have introduced a vet call now, and you can get to send your questions, medical questions, <laughs> about your dogs through our comments and through all our social media handles that is dog tv kenya everywhere so subscribe hit the notification bell to get notified every time we upload a new video i've had a nice time
hope you did too. This is Dog TV Kenya, the best documentary channel for all dog lovers. And of course, I'm your girl, Linda Kenyatta. Bye.